Hello, my name is M. Jason Graham, and this is Writing. Today we're going to talk about story action. Now we spent last week talking about, uh, actually a lot about character action. So then what is story action? Story action is a group of character actions that lead to the achievement of one character's ambition. So, you have story action in several different units. You can have them in a short story. You can have them in a movie or a film. You can have it in a series of films or a series of books or a series of comic books. Story action is always a group of characters. It is not one character pursuing something on their own because you are telling a story about emotional transformation. That's what this is concerning and large emotional transformations. And it's very difficult to do that without having multiple characters as a part of the story. So, since we have multiple characters, then we get complications and recoils. Which is to say, just because a character tries something out the first time, it doesn't mean that they're going to succeed. And chances are they're not going to succeed because that's not, that's not really realistic. Your character has to be able to fail. In point of fact, you have to get them in a position when at the start of the story, whatever you're telling it, where the audience knows that they're comfortable with a certain level of failure. That that's not something that's just going to totally wipe them out and the story stops there. We like underdogs. We want to see people pursue things that and, and, and win because we are the same way. We want to be able to pursue whatever it is that we pursue. And we need encouragement not to give up. So we don't like for our characters to give up when we watch them. This being said, as I said before, story action is a group of characters, which means you need to plot out why every character is there. What is every character's ambition? Does that mean that every character's ambition is going to be met? No, it shouldn't, because whichever character that we're focusing on, they're the protagonist. So, for instance, if you have a movie, like the one that I'm writing, and you have a protagonist and three protagonist foils, and an antagonist and six antagonist foils, then what do you do? Those are 11, those are 11 characters. We only have time to watch the journey of one. So then we need to be able to see whether or not that one person succeeds or fails. And this is very important. The character doesn't have to win. We generally get a cathartic, feel-good moment that comes from the Greeks, Aristotle. Um, that's, why we, that's why we tell stories is so people can identify and they can feel this catharsis from the protagonist finally winning, triumphing, learning the lesson. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you have morality plays in which the characters lose because they didn't, they didn't learn the lesson. And those are just as important. So, although most stories are told from the perspective of one character, nothing happens in a bubble. The audience doesn't need to witness every action of every character for the effects to be felt. And this goes back, goes back to what I was talking about with the nuclear bomb that has a 15-minute countdown. We don't need to stay on the screen with the nuclear bomb and watch the countdown in some form or fashion in order for us to get the feeling of the tension and the feeling of the stakes. That doesn't need to happen. We only need those, those short moments of it so that we can focus on the protagonist and focus on the message of the story. Story action and emotional arc are, they're linked. 
Like, you can't disconnect them. If you disconnect them, guaranteed, you will disconnect your audience. The length of the story, the action of the story, the emotional transformation, the emotional arc of the character, the larger it is, the more beats are necessary. That's it. And if you don't show those necessary beats, people are going to tune you out. So be very aware, very aware of that. And I have, when we get into, because I'm going to talk about story units this week. We're going to get into that because there's, there's always questions about that. I only have this much time to tell this story. People are going to say, well, I only have 15 minutes to tell this story, but I need to tell this great love tale. Well, sir, uh, ma'am, maybe, maybe you need to tell falling in love or infatuation. Maybe this great torrent Romeo and Juliet love, love story, you're not going to be able to do it in 15 minutes. Some people can't. Some people are skilled enough storytellers, depending on the medium, that they can, they can reasonably pull that off. But generally, that takes a master storyteller in order to do it. And generally, master storytellers don't like to be put in time crunches like that. They'd rather simply just tell a story in the time that they have to tell it and tell it to the best of their ability. So, along with the length, it's not just a transformation that happens to the protagonist. It's a, prota a transformation that happens to every character. So, I have a rule where I say no character left behind. Which is to say, when I do a story, every character is changed in some form or fashion, depending on how much time they spend on screen, quote unquote on screen, there will be some kind of journey, some kind of arc for them. And I think that this is important, particularly in epic storytelling, because characters need to be able, all characters need to be able to grow in a direction and have an opinion on everything. Because you, you grow and you have an opinion on stuff, so why... Why shouldn't every character be that? And on top of it, from a business standpoint, from a writing standpoint, you may have a character that's a foil in the story that's capable or has a, a point of view that's significantly different from your protagonist. And they can, they can really bring out that point and show it starkly. That's the strength of telling an epic story. That's the strength of in investing in these characters and understanding that you need to be able to tell the story emotionally as well. So, back to story action, the definition of which is a group of character actions that leads to the achievement of one character's ambition. My name is M. Jason Graham. And this is writing is brought to you by MJGStoryCreation.com. Go to MJGStoryCreation.com and turn your idea into an epic story today. I'll see you next time.